The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not weep. For John the Baptist came neither eating food nor drinking, and you said he is possessed by a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you said, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindication by all her children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. It feels good to be back here at the Divine Mercy Center. Some of you are probably wondering what happened. And um, I'm already getting so tired of having to explain. <laughs> I said I should have had a t-shirt made up. <laughs> Question is what happened. And to make a long story short, I jumped off mm -hmm. a six foot privacy fence and I shattered my heel. Um, so I had a cast on for six weeks and now this removable cast, but the orthopedic surgeon still doesn't want me to put pressure on it yet. So uh, we see each other the 26th of September and I'm hoping and praying that um, I'll be able to start physical therapy and um, mm. leave it in God's hands. When I knew that I was going to be coming here today, I was thinking, what can I say? And yesterday, I went into the parish office and my pastoral associate, a wonderful lady, Sister Nancy Zions, she's a member of the Dominican Sisters, but from Oxford, and um, a very faith-filled woman, a woman who, who loves the Lord very much, um, one who is there to defend the, the truth of the church, and um, as I hired her this past July, she said, I will always stand by you and help you. And so I was going through my mailbox. She hand gave me a, a few articles that I want to share with you because we are in some very difficult times. And, you know, sometimes people don't want to preach that. Um, and we should preach it. Because number one is when we're preaching, we're also educating people who don't have access to the internet or, or to uh, other forms of, of, of information. This already came, it's uh, written by uh, Robert Allen, a Detroit Free Press staff writer. And it was in uh, the Free Press, September 6th, 2014. Do we realize that here in the city of Detroit, they are going to be opening the Satanic Temple Detroit chapter? And just a few things taken from this. The Satanic Temple today marks the launch of its first chapter outside New York. But leaders say they won't worship Satan they don't practice cannibalism or sacrifice people or animals. It's peaceful, says Jex Blackmore, 32. <laughs> the idea of sacrifice specifically is to appease some demon or some god, and that's a supernatural belief that we don't subscribe to. Take it for what that is. But as she goes on, um, Groups feel that the government often privileges the majority of faith or trying to find new ways to correct that. Uh, what's going to happen is there's a picture here of Oklahoma, the Capitol lawn. Believe it or not, they're going to put 
an image, a statue of, uh, of Satan there. Uh, plans for all statues were put on hold while the state fights the ACLU lawsuit over the Ten Commandments statue. We get rid of the Ten Commandments, but we're going to put Satan. And what it's scary is that I'll leave this here with you. The statue will also have a functional purpose. Now get this, as a chair where people of all ages may sit on the lap of Satan for inspiration and contemplation. This group here in the city of Detroit This gentleman who's in charge, who's ahead of this, uh, this whole group, um, says that uh, he said the Bible is really sketchy on who this person Satan is, and that the red pitchforks, horns, and goat heads were all added long after the Christian Bible was completed. You can visit the Satanic Temple's website, and you'll see other images. They are also going to, you know. Uh, Michigan's law against same-sex marriage was struck down earlier this year when appealed in federal court with the state not allowing for such marriages. In the meantime, Blackmore, who's in charge of this group, says she hopes the Satanic Temple can use a same-sex marriage to challenge the long grounds of religious freedom. And it just goes on and on and on. We're living in very difficult Times. This is happening in in our in our world. August thirty first, three Columbus, Ohio churches vandalized with graffiti overnight. And what the churches how they were vandalized was it was just one word, it said infidels. Again, it's an attack on, on the church. We celebrated today Robert Bellarmine, uh, yesterday the, um, the martyrs Cornelius and Cyprian. You just gathered together and celebrated the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows and the day before the exaltation of the cross. We have to stand up for our belief. We have to stand up and, and say when something is wrong, something is wrong. And we have to pray that our people come back and those that are within the church that they're strong in their faith. How many of our children and our grandchildren don't even know basic prayers anymore? The church has always been attacked and she'll continue to be attacked and will continue to be attacked because of what we believe in, what we know the difference between right and wrong. And the only thing that will be able to get us through this difficult time, as one writer wrote, the dark ages within the church is our constant love and our devotion to the Lord. Even things that are happening within the church, and I don't really want to get into much more with New York City. You know, we have to pray that that merciful Lord touch each and every one of our hearts, and myself included, we're all sinners. We all make mistakes. You know? We have to pray for one another. We have to be like those, those men and women you know, who gave their lives for the church. Who truly believed. And they were strong. We have to be like those men and women who, who taught about this Christ but also taught the difference between right and wrong. And when we
we see something is wrong, we can't say it's right. Or we just can't walk away from it. We have to make a stand. No matter what it will cost us. I know what it costs myself. But you know, at the end of the day, in that quietness of our hearts in front of the Lord, we're able to say we did what was right. And the Lord gives us the strength and the courage to continue on this battle. It's out there. And it's coming closer. It's already here in Detroit, a satanic temple. Can you imagine how many young people like this 32-year-old Jex Blackmore, a Metro Detroit native and a University of Michigan graduate, is the lead person establishing this satanic temple in Detroit? How many others are going to follow this? But where is it going to lead them? They're walking deeper and deeper into darkness. Not into light. They can tell you whatever they want to here in, in this article. But what will be the reality? And how many more lives will be ruined? That cross is a sign of love and contradiction. It's always been a sign of contradiction. From its beginning. Why? Because upon that cross hung the Savior of the world. As I mentioned on the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross Sunday, if it wasn't for that cross, life would not have been nailed to that cross. And if life, who is the Lord, was not nailed to that cross, that side, that heart would not have been pierced. Can you imagine if that heart was not pierced? We would still be living in darkness. That those two sacraments, those symbols, is the water and blood would not have washed the world clean and fed us with life. If it wasn't for that cross, the gates of heaven would never have been open. And Satan still would have a rule over the world. But Christ put an end to it. But yet people are still walking in that darkness. We have to pray. We have to pray that we are strong. We have to pray that God continue to bless us in the ministry that you're doing here. To pray for those who have walked away from Christ to pray for this group, really, to pray for this group, that one day they will see that they're going in the wrong direction and the only way to life is not by following this, but by following the one who died on the cross for us. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the Lord.